Hey, Barb. So I'm actually back with a double shoot tonight um, because I feel like I owe you guys. So I wanted to try to get out two videos um, in one night. So I know a lot of you were wondering while I was over there because I was documenting literally everything I spent throughout this journey. So I wanted to give you guys all a full number of everything that I spent. So um, in regards to pesos and in US dollars. So I wanna go ahead and tell you guys um, kind of what I've spent and just go through those items for you and what those amounts were. And then I'll give you the grand total. So this video won't be too long. Uh, we'll get straight to the point. Um, but before I get started, I do want to ask you all to make sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. We have done a lot of good work with the subscribers, but I'd like to see it go even higher. Uh, we're doing amazing. So thank you guys all again for that. Um, and just like I said, like and subscribe to the videos. Um, I'm back and we're going to be continuing to call while I was trying to shoot. But I was saying we're back and so we're going to continue to roll these videos out. So let's get started. So, um, first thing that I wrote down on my list, of course, is my flight, um, because that was already paid for before I got on the flight. So, I mean, before I, I actually got there, but that was actual money that I spent, right? Um, uh, based off of not just quotes. So I spent $889.73 total on my flight because I had to uh, fly Delta. I had to pay for my luggage and that was an additional $30 each way. So that all added in together was the $889.73. Okay, next I added up the deposits that I had paid initially because that was also money that was already paid, right? So it was $150 to the, uh, to the recovery house. 250 to Duran, 150 to my coordinator for coordinating my surgery and organizing everything with Duran. Quick thing before I move forward. If you are having surgery with Duran, pay for a coordinator. It's not going to be a simple process if you do it without a coordinator. They're not going to communicate with you. It's going to be extremely hard for you. So just save yourself a headache and find a good coordinator and pay them um, because it's, it's not going to be worth the headache, sweetie. Not when you get over there. So do it. Um, and so that was $150 for the coordinator. And those were the little things that, of course, that I added up prior to going. So now when I got there, uh, first thing I paid when I got there was to my recovery house because that's where you go first. So my recovery house, uh, when I got there, uh, my amount was supposed to be $1,505. And I don't know how she changed it to $1,530. I didn't even feel like arguing. I was just like, okay, whatever. It's $25. I'm, you know, not going to argue. She was just like, oh, the rate change. I meant to tell you. And I kind of felt like it was some, you know, but I didn't feel like arguing. It was my first day there. I'm like $25. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to pick a fit over $25. And I got to stay with these people and they got to take care of me. So here go to $25. So anyway, I gave her $1,530 when I got there. Um, I had to see a hematologist. I don't know if you guys remember that when my hemo was low, that hematologist cost me $80. Um, then my first day, I tipped my driver $20. We went to the grocery store. I tipped them $5 US dollars. My blood work and my labs was the next thing that I paid for. That was $300. Um, the oxygen therapy breathing test that is required before surgery with Duran, you have to pay $100 for that. Um, the medicine for my hemoglobin after I seen the hematologist, and that cost me a hundred dollars. Um, my IV for my iron infusion, which is crazy because they gave me stuff to do an iron infusion and they sent me to my recovery house. My recovery house had to set up the IV, but they charged me $25 for the IV, uh, which I was kind of like, well, why wouldn't that be included in my stay? But Hey, whatever. They charged me $25. Um, so, and then my, um, uh, echocardiogram, which is also another required test that Duran makes you take. And that's a, like a test of your heart and all of that. Um, that was a hundred dollars you pay to that lady when you're at the clinic. And then my actual surgery was, uh, when I got there, I paid $5,050 for the surgery. Um, but this is where stuff got interesting. So I paid the $5,050 for the surgery because remember my quote was $5,300. I paid the $250 deposit, which I've already added that in. So $50,50 is what I'm paying. So then my FAHA, that was cool. They told me $150, it was $150. But my blood transfusion, 
um, ended up being 275. Now, when I was quoted, they told me, and I'm going back into my notes to tell y'all what I was quoted. When I was quoted, my blood transfusion was only supposed to be 255. So they added $20 to that. Um, then the pain pump was $200. Um, which again, I'll say it again, don't buy that pain pump. Save your money. Get you some pain pills from the state. Don't buy that pain pump. Save you $200. I'm sorry because I'm probably hating on their money, but I swear that was a waste of $200 I wish I'd have kept in my pocket. Anyway, insurance. Another thing, they quoted me $170 for insurance. When I got there, my insurance was $225. Mind you, the insurance is mandatory, so there's no getting away from that. Um, but that was still a big increase based off of what they told me initially. So I'm saying all this to say, remember how I told you don't just get exact figures. Always make sure you have a little bit extra in case. This is a prime example on why you need to do that because stuff changes once you get over there and they know you want that surgery and they know how desperate you are. Like they start doing different prices at you. And if you want it bad enough, you're going to pay. Um, how, how am I going to argue with them about their price? Because, I mean, yes, I said, you know, my quote said this, and she was like, no, it's this. So it's kind of like, well, either you walk away and don't get surgery or you pay the money. So they kind of got you backed in a corner where you can't, you you over there. You're not about to walk away for $50 or, you know, saying 50, what was that? Two, 170 plus 225 so that was $25, $55 for the insurance difference and then another $20 on the transfusion. So I'm not about to walk away and I didn't flew over here for $75. I'm not about to do it. I'm going to give you the extra money. But for those women who probably didn't come prepared, that could be a deal breaker. So I say all of this for all of my um, followers just so you guys can know be prepared. I don't want any of you guys to get over there and not be prepared and not have the money. Um, so again, um, the insurance ended up being $225. I bought an extra boppy pillow. I think I told y'all that while I was over there. Um, her name is Natalie Boppy Pillows. If any of you guys are in the Dominican uh, group that I've shared once before on one of my videos on Facebook, you can type in Natalie Boppy Pillow and she will come up. She actually comments on a lot of stuff and she delivers. Wherever you are, clinic or recovery house, she will pull up on you and bring it with no charge. Just pay for the Boppy Pillow. So it was $30. I also bought a BBL pillow from her right before I left, which was $55. Mind you, um, I haven't even used the BBL pillow yet. So I probably will tell you guys to save your money on that. I've used the two boppies that I have. Like I have the one boppy that I bought from them, which is my favorite one because it is way bigger and it's firmer um, and it's softer to my butt. So I actually take that one like everywhere, kind of like in my bed, around my house, you know, that type of thing. And then the other one that I have, I just leave it in my car. So that way when I hop in the car, I'm not having to keep moving a boppy in and out. But the other one, that's my favorite. So if I go get my lashes done, that's the other one. The other one, that's what I take with me because I got to lay on my back and uh, my butt. So I lay that boppy down and she got some other pillows and stuff for me and it works. So um, the boppy pillow that you buy in the DR absolutely is my favorite. Um, you don't probably have to be like me and buy two. I'm just excessive like that. So I got two and it works. So, but if I could do it all over again, I would probably buy two of the boppies in the DR opposed to the one that I bought here because the one that I bought here, I paid $40 for and the one over there was 30 and it was better. Um, and then, like I said, that BBL pillow, I paid $55 for that. And I swear to God, it's sitting in the corner of my room next to the chair i don't use it um i don't know i might use it when i go back to work um because i have a desk job so i might try it out when i go to work when i have to like sit at the desk most of the day um and see which one works better the boppy or the uh, bbl pillow we'll see so anyway um after the bbl pillow my overnight nurse so i don't know if you guys remember my overnight nurse was supposed to be included in my recovery house. Well, because I ended up having to stay in the hospital two nights instead of one because Duran got tired the first night and didn't want to do my surgery, I had to pay two nights for my um, uh, overnight nurse. So the first night was supposed to be covered. And then the second night um, I had to pay for, which she said it was $100. Um, that's another thing. She, my... My representative told me $100 and 
I'm I'm a question asker and I ask questions, I communicate with people, I talk to people. So I was talking to my overnight nurse while we was there and I asked her, I'm like, if I wanted to refer you to other people and whatever, what do you charge a night? And she was like, oh, I charge 50. So then I was thinking to myself, oh, you charge 50. She told me I had to pay you a hundred, but I didn't say anything. I just took it as, okay, I'm paying for both nights uh, opposed to her paying for one and me paying for the other. So they pull a lot of slick stuff on you while you over there. And that was my whole purpose for telling y'all this story. Um, because they pull some slick shit over there. Um, and you gotta be conscious, but you also gotta pick your battles. So again, this is my recovery house. I'm not trying to uh, make any enemies. I ain't even had surgery yet. So I just took it on the chin. I paid her the hundred and I tipped her 20. So that was 120. Paid her the 120 or whatever. Again, I ain't trying to make no enemies, but I took that mental note, right? Um, so, you know, if I was to go back, I'm going to make some different changes. I know how to operate stuff, but I also know how now I can share my stories with you guys and you guys can be hit before even going over there. Like, you have to understand, going over there, we are a business to these people. We are their livelihood. So, like, you got you can't be mad at the hustle, um, you know, because I, I work in sales. So, I get it. You know, like, everything, you know, at the end of the day is about a sale. It's about a dollar. It's either your pocket or mine. I get that mentality. Um, but I also feel like it's very, very, very insensitive when people are actually having surgeries and their health is at risk and you're squeezing them. Um, so again, no big deal. I paid her 120. I'm not going to go into all of that, but that's what, it, that's what that was. Okay. So, um, the next thing, the oxygen chamber. So as you guys already know, I developed necrosis. I ended up doing the oxygen chamber at $75 a pop. I did three of those. Um, so I wrote those down three times. Each time I went to the oxygen chamber, um, I had to pay my driver, Jose, uh, because that is not included in your regular round trips or, you know, your, your base package for your recovery house. So each time that I went over there um, to the oxygen chamber, that was $20 because she was on the other side of town. So three times doing that, 20, 40, 60. And then um, while I was over there, I ended up taking an additional $200 and converting that into um, pesos. Remember, initially, before I got over there, I had $300 converted through TravelX. Well, when I got over there, they have um, in the grocery stores, it's Western Union, and you can actually convert U.S. dollars in the Western Union inside of the grocery stores there. Um, and I actually discovered that you get a better return on your conversion through Western Union that's there. Um, better than I got through travel eggs. So I know I made that video about travel eggs before. Um, and if you're not, I mean, like if you're okay with going over there and then converting your money, great. Go to the Western Union over there. But if you want to have it done before, still go through travel eggs because that's the best place you can do prior to going over there. Because our Western Unions here are not going to have pesos um, on hand. Their, their Western Unions will. Um, so again, if you don't want the extra stress of trying to get to a store and convert, then just do it before you go. Um, but I ended up uh, um, converting an extra $200. And again, I initially had $300. So um, that's $500 that I ended up having in pesos. Now, when I um, was leaving, I stopped at the gift shop in the airline, uh, at the airport, I'm sorry. And I spent $80 on little trinkets for my family. I didn't realize that I hadn't bought them anything. Um, and I'm telling you guys this because I'm pretty sure you guys are going to want to do the same thing. Like nobody goes over there and then doesn't think about their family or whatever and bring something back. So I figured like that would be a good thing to include to let you guys know, hey, I spent $80 on my family to bring back little trinkets. So um, also I um, extended my stay, as you guys know, because I ended up having to have the second surgery. So extending my stay, although I didn't have to pay anything additional for my uh, my flight, I did have to pay my recovery house uh, another $260. Um, not, I mean, 
I get it. It's a business. I'm not complaining. I had to give her an extra $260 for four days because I was supposed to leave on Monday. I left on Friday. So no big deal. I needed their care. They did take really good care of me. I ended up getting 14 massages while I was there. Um, and, you know, like, I mean, the lady that was handling all the money wasn't actually there, but the people that were really were there were really, really nice. They took really good care of me. I don't have any complaints on how they treated me, especially lady. She's the main um, lady in the house and she does the massages, cooks the food and all of that. Like she was the bomb.com. I think I've told you guys about her before. Um, but yeah, she was the bomb.com. If I ever go back to the, um, that recovery house, if I ever go back, I will go back based off of her. Um, because like I said, a couple of the other things I was just kind of like, and I don't know if it's like that with every recovery house, because again, this is my first experience. Um, but I just felt like, you know, like when I, even when I had to extend my stay, um, we had to do like a sense of negotiating. Um, whereas like, I was like, okay, well, if I extend my stay, how much is it going to cost? And she was like, it's going to be 260. And then she was like, you'll have to pay for your own transportation and your laundry. And I'm like, what? I'm like, come on, man. I just spent good money with you. And you about to nickel and dime me? You can't take me to the doctor a few more times? Um, So I ended up having to actually tell her, like, you know what? I'm going to just look around. I'm going to look around and see if I can find another recovery house and have them come pick me up. Because I could take my money elsewhere. Like, you're not going to do me like that and nickel and dime me. And you know I'm in an unfortunate situation because now I want to stay a few more days because I had to have another surgery. So now you're going to start trying to nickel and dime me all over again. No, you not. Um, and so when I hit her with that, that's when she came back and was like, no, 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 just the 260 and that's everything. We'll take you back and forth to the clinic and, you know, you don't have to pay anything extra for your laundry. We'll do that complimentary. And I was like, you know, you should have did that at first. But again... It was very vacant there, so I do understand that she was probably trying to make as much money as she possibly could, which is understandable because, remember, I was the only girl for the longest. It was one girl that came after me, um, and she came and left quick, like, and then it was another girl um, that came right before I left, and I want to say she was only staying for a few days, too, and she was out. Both girls ended up just getting their breasts done, so that wasn't really any major procedures like I was getting where they had to stay. So, um, you know, again, operating just one girl at a time and you got all those workers, I can understand that, you know, hey, you got to get the money some kind of way. But I just felt like her knowing my situation and everything I had been through, I just felt like it was insensitive and not humane for her to penny pinch me like that. Um, so, of course, again, like I told you before, I work in sales. I bargain, baby. So, I already knew if I told her I was looking around, she'd come with something a little bit better. Or I was actually going to move around. Don't play with me. I will. I would actually pay more just to move around and prove a point than for you to feel like you got over on me. That's me. Um, not everybody's like me, but I think I had just got to the point where I felt like I had been nice for so long that it was just like, okay, y'all playing with me now. So anyway, came out of that extra $260. So the grand total on what I spent actually was $10,919.73. That is the grand total of everything that I have spent while I was over there to get there, this is not including any supplies, anything I've spent since I've been home. Because trust me, I've spent a good penny on supplies and things since I've been home. Um, and those I'll kind of update you guys on as the time is going. But I wanted you guys to at least know what you should possibly kind of gauge going to see Duran. Now, of course, your expenses are going to be the same as mine. Um, take notes on this video if you need to. Go back and listen to some of the amounts um, that I quoted. And then, like, the things that you don't feel are applicable to you, don't add those up. But then just take what I said and add those things up that you think are going to actually apply to you. And that's going to help you get closer to... Um, the estimated amount, uh, I'm sorry, the estimated amount that you should possibly take over there. Because again, you always want to bring more because things can change. You can have complications. Like some of that stuff was not supposed to happen. Um, you know, I was supposed to have to do the oxygen therapy and, you know, all the additional driving and all of that stuff. But hey, shit happens. I had to stay extra. So you want to be prepared. Like imagine y'all, if I came over there with just the money for my surgery. All of that happened to me. I didn't have the money to extend my stay. I didn't have the money for the oxygen therapy. I didn't have the money for none of that. 
Could you imagine how they would have treated me over there? Because when you ain't got money, trust me, you, you get thrown to the wayside. Because it's a business. You got to respect it. They don't give a damn about all that stuff. They want their bread. And if you ain't got it, move out the way, please. Um, so, um, you know, nobody wants to do anything for you if you don't have any money. And I think that's even kind of in America, too. It's like, if you don't have no money, you don't have no insurance. It's like, in the medical industry, oh, well, we'll see you later. But, um, you just gotta be prepared. You gotta be prepared. Oh, yes, my second surgery, just so y'all know, that $200 um, dollar insurance fee, $225, that is what covered my second surgery. So, I didn't come out of anything out of pocket for that second surgery. That is what your insurance covers. So, everything, you know, taking me back, operating on me, all that stuff, it was covered. I didn't have to pay an additional dollar for any of that. That was all covered. And again, I've said this many times before. I highly recommend Dr. Duran. Even since surgery, I have sent her pictures of my stomach to uh, my scar to see how it's healing. And they've responded, hi, Rachel, everything looks good. Or, you know, whatever the case may be, I have not had any incident where they have not responded to me. I have seen in some of the surgery groups where some of the girls are like, they won't respond to me. And my word of advice for that is work on your approach. And I'm not saying that you guys are being rude. Please, please don't take any offense by that. But um, it's, you know, it's better to be kind to people than to come off rude um, and think people are going to respond to you and help. Like, you got to treat people how you want to be treated. I'm always, like, even when I was there and I was frustrated, I haven't been disrespectful. I haven't been mean to anybody. I've always kept a smile on my face. Even when I was irritated and I was kind of like Trump in my recovery house lady, I didn't do it in a disrespectful way. I was just like, okay, you know, I'm just going to see my options. You know, you got to play that role. Um, you, you can't expect people to do for you and you're being mean. It just don't work. Be nice all the time. Because, again, these people are providing you a service. Um, yes, you're paying them your money, but they're providing you a service. So, the fact that they're providing you a service, you want to be kind to them, right? Um, and if you have questions after surgery, I, I just, I haven't had a problem with anybody responding to me. So, I don't get the approach where a lot of the girls are saying they can't get a response. It's got to be something that you're doing. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. Let me not say that. I, I just... Try a new approach or either, you know, you might be asking too many questions. I don't, I don't know, but I know any question that I've asked, I've got a response. And I don't bother them and I don't ask them nonsense because a lot of the stuff that I have questions about, I will Google to find out um, answers before I even ask them a question. So, like, literally the only questions that I might ask is I might take a picture of my incision which is something that they can look at to tell, you know, to ask, how does this look? Does this look normal? Does everything look good? And they say, yes, this, everything looks good. Take care, sweetie. You know, that type of thing. I'm not going to ask them dumb questions that I can find out the answers to myself. And I think that's where um, also a lot of girls get um, left on red is because they start asking questions that you can literally go find the answer to. Um, not saying it's anything wrong with asking questions, but sometimes just utilize your resources. Um, and again, I'm a resource for you guys. So I don't mind you guys asking me questions. Um, just be patient with me and give me time because like right now I'm getting back to it. Um, I just mentioned on the other video, I'm willing to go live. So if you didn't watch the other video and you're watching this one, you can leave in the comment section below a date and a time and evening wise, because I'm, I'm sure a lot of you work during the day and I wouldn't be willing to go uh, live in the evenings to answer all of your questions that way we can get them out um so if you didn't watch the last video and you're watching this one and you're hearing me um make sure if you want me to go live leave a comment and just state a date and a time and then i'll pick a date and a time and then go from there so anyway um that was all the cash now the pesos that i spent while i was over there um i'm just kind of gonna round this all up for you i ended up spending Fifteen thousand seven hundred fifty-eight and thirty-nine cents in pesos while I was over there. Now, um, I went to the grocery store a few times. The first night I was at the hospital, um, because I hadn't ate all day, I had to buy my own food. So I ended up having to buy food, um, different medicines I had to buy while I was over there, different um, creams I had to buy. Um, I actually had to buy tampons and stuff right before I left because I started my period again. Um, I had to pay, I actually had to pay for a ride, um, for lady 
um, the second, the second surgery that I had, uh, because I needed somebody there with me, I had to pay for a ride for her to get to the hospital. Um, which no problem. Um, I had to pay for that ride, you know, different little stuff, Neosporin, um, you know, stuff like that. Um, so that's where all my pesos pretty much went. And then all the rest of my pesos. So again, I spent 15758 which I did the math on that. It's actually about $315 roughly um, that I had in pesos that I actually spent and like kind of dished out to different vendors and stuff. So the rest of my pesos when I left, um, I didn't tip my... I didn't tip my workers like in the recovery house as I was going. I actually just tipped them at the end. So everything that I had left, um, I just gave it to everybody that was there. I gave the most to Lady because she did the most for me. And then I gave the other girls a little bit as well. And then I tipped Jose again, my driver, um, before I left. Like I emptied out everything I had in pesos. I didn't want to take anything back. So I gave it all to them. So it was roughly, you know, it was roughly about a hundred and what eighty dollars or so in uh in one hundred and eighty dollars in U S you know in pesos or whatever um that I kind of split over four people at the recovery house and five so I split it over five people so but again lady got the most because lady did the most for me um Jose I think I gave him like the equivalent of twenty dollars or whatever so any because he had been getting tips for me throughout the whole trip so he made a good money about a money off me so he got the shortest end of the tipping stick at the end but he had been getting tipped throughout the whole process and i kind of tipped lady um like when she called the store for me and stuff i would just give her the change um and like i said that was just courteous and when i tipped her at the end like you can tell those people um live in poverty and like they be needing that stuff i don't know what they get paid but she was like she gave me a hug and i actually even gave her daughter her little baby some money um, but she gave me a hug and she was just like, thank you so much. Do you need anything? And I was just like, no, I'm good. Thank you. You know, cause like she was a lifesaver. I don't know what I would have done without her assistance and her, um, sorry, her helping me through it all. Like it was points where I couldn't even pull up my own damn clothes and you know, and stuff like that. So honestly, um, I appreciated every single thing that they did for me. Um, and I wish I could have tipped them a little bit more, but I think that was sufficient for, um, you know what i had left and whatever i just like i said i got the extra 200 dollars in pesos and then i was just like whatever's left that's what they get so that's what we did um so that's still even the pesos that was included in the grand total that i gave you so remember ten thousand nine hundred nineteen dollars and 73 cents was the grand total of everything that i spent going over there to get surgery just not including what i spent on supplies before and supplies after so um if you guys have questions about that let me know um but i'm gonna wrap this video up for the night and again thank you very much and we will talk soon every single day